hello students today we will learn about the basics of sound engineering i will take the very basic concepts and particularly we will take what is this decibel scale okay decibel scale of sound okay coming to the topic see how sound is created suppose this is the diaphragm diaphragm is a thin elastic membrane same as your speaker the speaker contains a paper type of entity which is acting as a diaphragm so when the diaphragm vibrates it creates sound how it creates see this is the thin membrane that is the diaphragm and it is vibrating so it is giving the hit since it is in air so it is giving the hit to the air molecules so hit is transferred to the first air molecule then from first to second then from second to third like this like this way the sound propagates and it is developed now suppose this uh, diaphragm is vibrating and this thin black line is the equilibrium line means initially when it was not vibrating then the pressure over it is denoted by this thin equilibrium line okay now when it is vibrating it is creating pressure disturbances because it is giving the heat to the air so it is creating pressure disturbances compared to that of this equilibrium pressure line you can see this red line is uh, showing the pressure disturbances created on this diaphragm you can see this pressure is going up and down and we want to find the average pressure exerted on this diaphragm by the help of some instrument in case we want to find out the average pressure developed on this diaphragm so the average pressure will be zero the reason being you can see that pressure is continuously becoming positive as well as negative pressure is continuously uh, sometimes pressure is rising and then falling like this so compared to this equilibrium line the pressure is negative as well as positive so in case we are taking some samples of pressure on this diaphragm by the help of some instrument measuring instrument we are taking the samples of pressure then the algebraic sum of all those pressures will be zero because it is positive sometimes and sometimes negative so in case we are taking the algebraic sum of all those samples it will become zero so we cannot find the average pressure developed on this diaphragm okay now other way to find the average is take the squares of all those samples means the pressure we are measuring suppose p1 is the first pressure sample p2 is the second pressure sample take the squares and average of those squares since square always makes a negative number positive so we will get a positive answer but that is not correct reason being the unit of pressure is newton per meter square however the square unit will be what newton square per meter to the power 4 okay so in case we are taking the root of this average then we will get the correct unit that is the unit per meter square that is called as root mean square pressure on this diaphragm okay this will not give zero this will give some number other than zero so we will get some average pressure that is called as root mean square pressure on this vibrating diaphragm now what is sound pressure level we will take that sound pressure level is defined mathematically spl is equals to tan log tan the base will be tan the rms pressure and divided by some reference pressure and that reference pressure always we have to take 0.4 times 0 to newton per meter square this is the reference pressure so whatever the average whatever the root mean square pressure is that we can find by this way upon the reference pressure and then square the whole square of this uh, p by p reference okay this is called as sound pressure level okay now next term that is sound power level okay you know this thing that whenever sound is created energy is applied reason being sound is also a form of energy so some form of energy converts into sound energy like this way the sound is developed okay so whatever energy is utilized per second per unit time for development of the sound okay is called as sound power now the sound power level is denoted by swl swl equals to 10 log base 10 w by w reference okay w is the sound power w denotes the sound power in watts okay whatever the power associated with this developed sound upon some reference power w ref and you have to always take 10 to the power minus 12 watt as a reference sound power okay so whatever the power associated with the sound that will be in the numerator and the reference power will be in the denominator and tan log base tan this is called as sound power level now we are going to learn what is decibel scale see decimal is scale is also called as sound intensity level okay now what is sound intensity you would have observed that this is the headphone you can see when we apply on headphone to uh, listen to the music so headphone is there so in case it is closer to our ear we are able to hear the sound but in case we are keeping the headphone far away from the ear we hear no sound so what is the difference 
in both the cases the power used to develop the sound is same so in second case why you are not able to hear the sound reason being that when the earphone the headphone is far away from our ear then actually the sound intensity which reaches our ear is less as compared to that of sound intensity when the headphone is closer and what is sound intensity whatever the power associated with the sound is okay divided with the area see sound is propagating like this from this speaker it is coming out from the headphone suppose this red line is showing the area so in case we are dividing whatever sound power is there with the area we will get a sound in intensity okay so when the headphones are closer to ear actually sound intensity is higher this is the reason that we are able to hear that sound you can see it is closer so this much area we will apply to find out the sound intensity now in case it is far away actually the same power is diluted because when it is far away then sound is distributing all around so ultimately at the ear uh, the new sound intensity will be uh, the w will be same the power associated with the sound will be same only the area up to which this sound is reaching is higher so in case a2 is higher so less intensity of sound will be produced so we are unable to hear the headphone sound okay so power associated in both the cases is same only the difference is with the intensity level and what will be the unit of intensity simple watt per meter square now what is uh, sound intensity level or decibel scale simple it is also defined mathematically that is equals to tan log tan whatever the sound in intensity is there for example here suppose it is i2 okay divided by with a reference intensity that is tan to the power minus 12 watt per meter square this is the reference intensity you know why it is taken as a reference because at least this much sound intensity must be there so that we can detect that sound is developed in case the uh, intensity is lesser than this tan to the minus 12 watt per meter square our ear cannot detect the sound so this is what called as decibel scale or sound intensity level this is the definition of decibel okay so this is defined mathematically now some more basics of sound sound is a longitudinal magnetic mechanical wave reason being uh, mechanical wave means sound needs some medium to pro propagate some uh, physical medium maybe gas maybe solid or maybe liquid longitudinal means when sound propagates here you can see uh, the diaphragm is vibrating so it is giving the hit to first molecule so first molecule is vibrating then the vibrations of first molecule to second molecule it is vibrating third molecule it is vibrating like this so when the sound is propagating the line of vibration of all the molecules are in same direction okay so these kinds of waves are called as longitudinal waves means the molecules are vibrating like this and sound is propagating in the same direction both are parallel the line of vibration and the line of propagation are same so it is a longitudinal wave and the velocity of sound in any gas is given by a equals to root gamma rt a is the velocity of sound gamma is the ratio of specific heat cp and cv of that gas for air it is 1.4 r is the characteristic gas constant of that gas for air it is 287 joule per kg kelvin and t is the temperature in kelvin so in case you are putting all these variables the value of all these variables you will get the velocity of sound okay in case is pl in place of t we are keeping uh, 273 kelvin because 0 degree centigrade is 273 kelvin in place of r287 in place of gamma 1.4 we will get around 332 meter per second it means in case air is at 0 degree centigrade then the speed of sound in that air will be 332 meter per second okay now sound is a form of wave okay so it must have some frequency also all waves have frequency as well as wavelength okay so the human ears can detect a sound between the range 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. In case the sound is developed with this much frequency, with, which is falling in this range, then only we can detect the sound, otherwise not. The sound below 20 hertz is called as infrasonic sound and sound above 20,000 hertz is called as ultrasonic sound. Okay. Now, sound engineering is also called as acoustics. Other name of sound engineering is acoustics. And sound shows the property of diffraction as well as reflection. Diffraction means uh, from the edges it can turn means suppose we are uh, speaking in room and through the open door the sound is propagating inside other room as well as spreading inside the whole region of room the reason being the property of diffraction through the edges of door it can bend okay so that is what diffraction is and reflection means it follows the laws of reflection also means if sound is propagating in some medium say a gas and hits if it hits some solid surface then from that hit 
it can be reflected and it uh, follows the laws of reflection means the angle of incidence is equals to the angle of reflection okay so hope by this small lecture you would have understood the terms connected to sound engineering you would have understood the decibel scale as well as some more basics of sound thank you